In the mid-19th century, the American frontier effectively stopped at the western edge of states that bordered the Mississippi River. Between there and California was a void, largely filled with Native Americans and scattered pioneers. But by 1890, the U.S. Census Bureau announced that the frontier had been all but erased. First, let's look at how Western expansion happened so quickly, and then we'll talk about what one historian believes were the most lasting effects of the American frontier. The first people to open the West were miners, hoping to strike it rich, first in California, then the Rocky Mountains, and finally the Black Hills and Yukon. In each place, the earliest prospectors stripped the surface metals quickly, and underground mining was then carried out by corporations. But even though most of the miners struck out, they left a tremendous legacy in the trails they blazed. The onslaught of people created roads, towns, and awareness of the West. So even though few prospectors actually struck it rich, they laid the foundations for permanent communities throughout the continent. Another spike in Western migration came with the Homestead Act of 1862 and similar bills in the 1870s. Beginning on New Year's Day, 1863, individuals could apply for a 160-acre homestead west of the Mississippi River. The land was free, but in order to get the deed, the owner had to build a 12 by 14 foot home and grow crops for five years. The Homestead Act attracted people from many walks of life to the Great Plains, especially poor or landless farmers, disillusioned urban dwellers, freed slaves, and new immigrants. Where the prairie ended, beyond the reach of the Homestead Act, the wide-open foothills of the Rocky Mountains served as home to scattered ranchers who grazed their cattle freely on the open range where no homesteads or fences or property lines existed. Brands served to identify ownership of a herd. When the cattle were ready for sale, cowboys took them on what was called the long drive, walking sometimes thousands of miles to the nearest markets. For better or worse, this period in history also coincides with the Romantic era, in which many aspects of life were recorded more as ideals than reality. Farming and ranching in the West was incredibly difficult, if not impossible. Homesteaders might have land, but they couldn't afford the steel plow needed to break it or an animal to pull it. Even if they had the equipment and animals, they often didn't have enough water to irrigate the crops or water the animals. They didn't have trees to build houses or burn fires or light stoves. They faced all the same extreme weather conditions that modern Americans face, drought, wildfires, tornadoes, blizzards, but without any modern assistance. Many homesteaders lived in terror of murderous raids by Native Americans, and ranchers feared cattle rustlers. And they did almost all of this completely alone, isolated on their free 160 acres or trapped by the wide open space around them. Every three out of five homesteaders abandoned his land. It might have been difficult, but throughout the life of the bill, millions of Americans believed that they would be the next success story on the prairie. The Homestead Act saw another flurry of applications in the years following the collapse of Reconstruction as African Americans fled the South looking for a place to start over. As many as 40,000 of these so-called exodusters settled all black towns in Kansas where they found more opportunity and equality. The railroad eased life for many homesteaders, bringing more people, services, and opportunities. Farm goods could be sold and shipped much more easily to the east, and manufactured goods could be purchased and sent west to the eager farmers and their families. However, the railroad also brought in corporations that often managed to wrestle control of best land, sources of water, and emerging local governments. Like homesteading, ranching on the open range peaked just after Reconstruction, but it came to a screeching halt in the 1880s. The invention of barbed wire effectively closed the open range. A series of terrible blizzards mid-decade also convinced many cattlemen to pack it in for good. Finally, the expansion of the railroad ended the need for the long drives, and suddenly the cowboy life ended just as suddenly as it had begun. The 